Have you ever made a mead that stopped too soon? Maybe it stopped short of your goal. Well, today I'm going to show you four ways to fix a mead that is too sweet. Let's get started. All right, so this video is for a mead that is too sweet. Normally this happens when you've started a brew and the yeast are going and then they stop early. It could be something from stress. It could be that you put so much sugar in that they capped out. Anyways, regardless, you're left with a mead that has so much sweetness to it that it's not palpable. In this situation, here's what I have. I used the following recipe you see right here. I made this basically four gallon batch of mead. I started it at 1130 or 1.130 gravity. I used the Kvike Voss, which gets to about 12%. And this stopped very, uh, sorry, I started at 1145, even higher. Um, it stopped very early, it stopped at about 1.060. So here's the situation. That is super sweet. I mean, that is like cloyingly sweet, just hurts your bones to drink it. So I wanna change that, I wanna fix it. Um, now I have four ways that I can do this. Are they all m the most efficient? <laughs> we'll see, we're gonna test them. So um, method number one will be to take and blend it with another mead. So let's say you have a traditional mead or another mead that you want to blend with. Um, you just literally take part of it or all of it and mix and match your ratios. You could do 50-50, you could put just a little bit of your too sweet mead in, whatever you wanna to do to make that work. That's method number one. We're gonna test that one. Method number two, not my favorite, but you can water it down. So we're gonna also test that. I'm gonna go probably 75% mead and about 25% water in a gallon. And we're gonna see how that turns out, how that brings down the sweetness. We can also attempt to adjust the acid balance and tannic value of it to see if we can sort of round out the sweetness. It'll still be very sweet, but maybe with some more acid balance and some oak or something like that, it'll be more palpable. And our final version is to take and actually try and restart the brew. So we're also gonna do that. This video might be a little bit long because I'm gonna explain everything that I'm doing, all four versions, and I'll do a taste test to tell you if it worked or not. So let's start, first of all, with the blending one. I currently don't have just a regular mead that I want to blend with this. So I'm going to make a half gallon of mead. This is a uh, half gallon. This is 1.5 pounds of honey. Um, water up to about a, almost half gallon. I'm gonna fill it up here in a second. It's gonna, if the starting gravity is sitting somewhere in that realm of like, 1.080. We are going to let that ferment out. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take and put half a gallon of the, the too sweet one into this. We will blend these two things together. So this is our blending one we'll get to. Um, this one is going to be the water. We're gonna add water. So I'll pour probably get about 75% of this carboy filled with the too sweet mead, fill the rest of it up with water and then that's that, pretty easy. This one will be our attempt to balance acid and oak. And the last one is our restart. So let me go ahead and move my mixtures over because that's step one. All right. I moved it all over. While I moved it over, I also decided it'd be the good time to go ahead and start doing what I want with each one. So right here is the original, I'm leaving it as is so when we do our taste test, we can come back and say, this is what it started, at, started as. This one right here is the fixing with some adjuncts. So what I did, I have three glasses here. I poured a little bit of the original mead in and into all three. And then I took the three different main acids in brewing. So there's tartaric, malic, and citric. I sprinkled just a tiny amount in each glass, enough to where it was discernible, and I taste tested them. And I decided which one is gonna fit best. Um, citric was too bright. There's already a lot of brightness from the sweetness from the honey. So it was too bright and kind of grippy. 
Um, so Malik was a little better, more round, more um, less less bright, but it was still a little too bright for me. So Tartaric is what I ended up using. Tartaric added some more round, nice smooth acid balance to it. So I put roughly about an eighth of a teaspoon of tartaric acid into here. And I've also added one entire ounce of, I've lost the bag now, one entire ounce of American oak chips to this. So hopefully between the oak chip tannin and the acid, tartaric acid, we will be able to kind of counter the sweetness. We'll see if that works. This one right here, these two are going in tandem. This is a the regular mead that we had. This is the tr uh, traditional that we've started using Lalvan EC1118. We're gonna mix these two eventually. This is the one we're gonna restart. This is the yeast, uh, yeast starter. So I moved some of the mead out of here into here and I pitched uh, EC1118. I also put some water in here to kind of bring that down so the, the starting mixture wasn't too crazy. I'm hoping the yeast will wake up and start doing their thing. And last but not least, we have the cut with water one. Now, I took a gravity reading of this one after cutting it with water, and I did about a third water, two thirds um, mead, and it's still very, very sweet. So we might have to cut with more water as we taste test. So we have them all right here. The only thing we're really waiting on are the oak and the acid timing for this one, but that also gives us time to restart this mead, hopefully let it finish out and go dry, and then to let these two kind of do their thing. So I'll, I might give some updates. I might just come back and tell you what happened. So here we go. this all right bc we are here you're help, helping me um with a i think this is a very fun test for me because okay. i'm not going to spoil anything i'm going to just mix and match around it's been a I whole just, night of no spoilers no me. spoilers but this one i promise you is not poison okay good <laughs> so you're going to taste test okay i have not taste tested these by the way so this is also a unique experience for me i will cool. purposefully not and we're going to decide which one we like the most and then i will spoil <laughs> okay spoil it'll all make sense in time don't worry okay so my goal is to tell you which one i like the most yes this is a very unusual uh project it, it will what you if i give me. i cannot spoil i can only it will again it will make sense okay. in time so um i would say let's let's just taste and then we'll kind of come back whenever we're ready to so are we gonna say, rank these sure we can rank them okay I just need clear instructions. And then, so yeah, so let's do this. Let's taste and then rank them and then we'll kind of go down the line and you can okay. say why. Okay. So go ahead. Let's just... High pressure situation here. <laughs> I feel like I'm being pranked right now. <laughs> no pranks. Let's do this. I think the best way to go about this will be to Start with your worst. This one. Okay. And I will say my worst. I just, I would love for you to give some notes on why. Well, on what I don't like about it. Yeah. Tell me what you don't like about it. You can look at it. Oh, okay. right, wait, sorry. Don't look at it. Just tell me what you don't like. Hold on. I may have lied. <laughs> yeah, these kind of taste the same. Um, it is very acidic. Mm -hmm. It um, is very aggressive. It's very sweet. The nose on it is kind of stingy. Mm -hmm. like I real, the palate on it, like the flavor is not super offensive. The nose on it is pretty um, stingy. Yeah. Um, it's just not very good. Well, I would like, because I don't know that I'll give away all of the test. What is on the bottom of your cup? <clears throat> it says restarted. Restarted. And the same one. Okay. Okay, let's go to your number two. Cryptic. I can tell. This one is less bad than this one. The nose isn't as bad on it. There is a heat in the mid palate on this one 
that I think it kind of distracts. Mm -hmm. It kind of distracts from the other flavors. And it, it's a little bit like, you know, in baseball, when you have somebody caught between bases, mm -hmm. so the first base is thrown at the second, mm -hmm. they're throwing it back and you've got the runner in between. That like distracting flavor is doing that oh, between the other good flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> it's just not very good. What does it say? OG. It's same thing. I agree completely. So far we've lined up. This is weird. We never agree. <laughs> <laughs> Only when it matters. <laughs> okay. Okay, your third. This one is just like a pleasant, middle of the road sweet mead. Um, again, there's a little bit of like a flavor mm -hmm. in there that is distracting, but not as much as this one. Uh huh. Um, it's it's too sweet for my palate. Yep. But it is, as yet, it is inoffensive. Okay. Whereas I felt like these other two were a little bit offensive. And what does that one say? Adjuncts. Okay. Mine did not agree. Okay. So this is that we have, we have come to a point of not agreeing. Well, and I'll explain. Yeah. Because it was tough between this one and this mm -hmm. one. I think I know why. Okay. If we're on the same boat. So this one obviously is very thin and watery. Mm-hmm. And the reason I preferred it over mm. this one is because it waters down the funky flavors that I could pick up in mm -hmm. this. Probably also because I primarily drink Hydromels, low yep. ABV stuff. And so this kind of fits with my palate preference anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like this one tasted better, but I think it tastes better because it's it tastes diluted. Mm -hmm. And that one says? Water. Watered down. We got these reversed. Your, Watered down. Your okay. three was my, or sorry, your two was my three. And so okay. it, it, we got inverted yeah. a little bit. And it, this was like a toss up. These yeah. could have been in the I, same place for me. That one should be obvious of what happened there. Yeah. Hence the name. And last but not least, your number one, which has to be a blend um, of something. Interesting. Wait, did I say we agreed earlier? What is my, oh, oh, interesting. Okay. Yours is interesting. Mine says blend. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, that's interesting. This is where we come down to personal opinion and tasting. Yeah. This one is not too sweet to me. The flavors that I felt like were off flavors in here are balanced out by whatever else is happening in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't have as much of the distracting thing happening as what was happening in, in these other ones. And this one is really watery, but this one has, this one tastes like this one, but without being watery. Does I got you. Sense? So, so yours, your ranking just to get right was restarted number five. Yes. Original OG number yeah. four. Your three was the adjunct. Yeah. And this, mine was watered down. Your two was, was watered, down. watered down and mine was blend. Which again, they could have been any. And my first was the adjuncts. So let's go. Interesting. We'll go backwards a little bit. And talk so about I this. did feel like the adjunct one and the blend one were very similar in flavor profile, but I mm. felt like I got more acidity in this one. Whereas I felt like the acid profile in this one was more balanced. And so that's why it was like a toss up between these because I didn't really care for the wateriness, oh. but the wateriness I felt like made the flavor profile less intense. Like honestly, the, it could go like this, like these could have just been a tie for a second, but I really felt like the blend one, the acid profile was better balanced. Well, that I still is, don't know what these are. That is very interesting. Okay, okay. so we'll, I'll talk about this. Um, six months ago, I made a uh, I, I did a challenge. I made a meet at 11.45. Used the Kavaika Voss. Okay. Left town for 10 days and just let it go. It stopped at 10.60. Oh boy. It cut, it was done. But I learned Voss goes up to like 11 or 12. So it did not, it cut about relative to where the yeast were. It was also in the heat. It got okay. up to, you know, those 90s and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it could have mm -hmm. just been a problem. Got stuck and said, what do I do with this? mead now so i split it into multiple parts a couple one gallons i kept half a gallon of the original 
Okay. Which, you know, your second one is that OG. That is what it tastes like. Out with nothing, nothing to changed it. I think it. You do get big citrusy acidic esters in that one. Yes. So this was way too much. I was like, this is too sweet. 1060 yeah. is like cloying, you know, punching the face. Split it into a couple of containers and did some things. I tested four ways to fix an overly sweet meat. Okay. Way number one was your your number five. It's I restarted. restarted. I literally just pitched new yeast. I took a made a yeast colony, did a yeast starter, pitched new yeast. What yeast? Uh, EC11, and just because I knew it would it clean yeah. clean it up. Okay. For the most part, it's obviously still got a little sweetness to it because 1145 is like a. I mean, a 20%. Pretty high, yeah. So with that EC, was probably not going to get there without <clears throat> extra help. Restarted. That's what happened there. That one took a while to finish. Um, my number three, your number whatever, was um, watered it down. Literally just took and put water into okay. it and cut it. Obviously creates more problems and that you now have a watery brew. Yeah, but if, if this was carbonated, it wouldn't be so bad. Yes, I agree. Carbonation would have... The, the, <laughs> the tannic value, the sweetness is there. We took the, whatever, ABV, let's say, down 50%. Yeah. So we cut it to a 5%, carbonate it, you're going to fix the problems. I mean... Okay. Yeah, no, it's... it's. If this was sparkling, it might not be so bad. And um, your... Mine was technically number three. So... Yeah. I'm gonna start with this one, the blend, that because that makes sense. Okay. No sense. The blend was literally just taking. I made a dry traditional. I mm -hmm. uh, fermented a dry traditional, and I think I mixed the two, and there was some a little bit of refermentation. Okay. But for the most part, not enough to like do anything because I didn't. I used like a D47 or something, and so it was like ah, I'm out real fast. Okay. The final one was adjuncts, and what's interesting about what you noted is there was. I add I added oak to try and add some tannic value and I added I believe tartaric or malic acid I can't remember which acid to try is, and balance the acidity I think it's malic acid it's got mm. a very appley flavor to it and I probably went what I'm finding is I probably just added too much at that point um, and I, part of me wonders, had I added less acid mm, balance, mm -hmm. would this one have been better? You know, it's, especially based off of your ranking system here. <laughs> it's not terrible. I just, I prefer the acid profile on this one to this one because it feels more yeah. subdued. But this one I liked the most because I felt like the oaking helped to bring that tannin back. The acidity mm -hmm. helped. It's still the same sweetness level. There's been no change to sweetness. It's still 1060. And it's which is sweet. It, yes, it is very, very sweet. But it did help fight some of that acidity, or excuse me, the sweetness, uh -huh. the overly sweet side of it. And I think that was part of the test, was to see if I could distract from <laughs> the sweetness. Okay. So that that was it. I mean, I, that's what I did. And I wanted to do this test, and I wanted to make sure and not tell you what was happening because I don't think you'd have any bias, but um, you, you know, know. I, want, I wanted you to go in blind a little bit. So really the answer is to, to turn it into a hydromel or to mix it yeah. in a couple of different ways. I would I would say of, <laughs> of all the options, restarting worked. It's maybe this one, gross. Maybe this one needs a lot of time to like come down. Maybe. I don't know, like you're, it's not great. Um, the original is just not it's, not good. It's not good also, yeah. Um, I do agree the water down would be good as a hydromel. Mm -hmm. The only problem is for anyone who does not have access to a kegging system, using more priming sugar yeah. in that is going to be a total mess. So unless you can keg, mm -hmm. carbonating a mead in this situation is not super easy. Yeah, that, that, could, that could end up being dangerous. And then uh, <laughs> blending, of course. I feel like that's always a good option just because... Mm -hmm. I mean, you blend everything. You blend any brew in general. Yeah. Adjuncts can be anything. Could be tannic, could be acidity, could be all that stuff. But combating sweetness is possible. If you're watching this and you were going, well, I made too sweet of a brew, <laughs> here are four ways you can hopefully change it. We, were, I'm gonna condone at least two of the ways. <laughs> um, yeah. And I, th I think you'd agree with that. No, I, 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 think, I think you did a good job of hiding the sweetness in the adjunct one. I just, I think the blended one 
has a more balanced flavor, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Yeah. So, so that's it. Um, BC here is, uh, you, if you haven't seen him on the channel, then you have not watched <laughs> one of my videos before. So You've been around a lot. You've been around just a few videos. Uh, you can find him at Doing the Most. He is on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, literally everything. Um, you can find all those links down everything. below. Go and <laughs> he's on Walmart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, catch me on LinkedIn. <laughs> real, real big on LinkedIn. <laughs> Um, go check him out and if you have any questions about what happened leave a comment down below it just I mean we I'm here to help and I know that when you hop over to BC's channel and you ask questions and look for advice um, he's he's the same teacher mind as me he wants to help you so we're, we're here to help you be a better brewer and I hope that you have enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time cheers cheers, cheers.